అఘోరా టు కుండలిని చాప్టర్ మ్యూజిక్ టీచింగ్ మీ అబౌట్ అండ్ గెటింగ్ మీ ఇన్వాల్వ్డ్ ఇన్ ద వర్షిప్ ఆఫ్ గణేష వాజ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ విమలానందాస్ గ్రాండ్ సైన్ ఫర్ మై డెవలప్మెంట్ యాజ్ హీ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్డ్ అవర్ మెథడ్ ఈజ్ వెరీ సిస్టమాటిక్ ఫస్ట్ యూ వర్షిప్ గణేష ఎట్ ద మూలాధార చక్ర దెన్ హీ గివ్స్ యూ ద పర్మిషన్ అండ్ ద నాలెడ్జ్ హ టు వర్షిప్ హిజ్ మదర్ మా హూ టేక్స్ ఫారం విత్ ది హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ కుండలిని శక్తి మా టీచర్స్ యూ హౌ టు వర్షిప్ హర్ గ్రాండ్ కాన్సోర్ట్ లార్డ్ శివ ఎట్ ది ఆజ్ఞ చక్ర అండ్ వన్స్ యూ అచీవ్ శివ హీ విల్ టేక్ యూ టు విష్ణు ఇన్ వన్ ఆఫ్ హిస్ ఫారమ్స్ జీసస్ రామా నారాయణ ఆర్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ ఇట్ అండ్ యూ ఆర్ డెస్టిన్డ్ ఫర్ ఇట్ కృష్ణ ఇన్ గోలోక విమలానంద వాజ్ అన్ ఎక్స్పర్ట్ మ్యూజిషియన్ బోత్ వోకల్ అండ్ ఇన్స్ట్రుమెంటల్ అండ్ మెనీ మార్నింగ్స్ ఐ సాట్ క్వైట్లీ ఫర్ అవర్స్ లిజనింగ్ టు హిమ్ ప్రాక్టీస్ సమ్ టైమ్స్ అకాంపెనింగ్ హిమ్ ఆన్ ది తాన్పురా వన్స్ ఆర్ ట్వైస్ ఎ వీక్ నారాయణ రావ్ ఇందూర్కర్ a reputed tabla player would come to accompany him and after the practice was over i would serve them tea while they told stories of the old maestros it was in the aftermath of one of these sessions that following narayan rao's departure vimlananda introduced me to music as a sadhana what is music he asked rhetorically as i lit him a cigarette people have been trying since the beginning of time to find out what is that thing which can please us with its harmony sound when it becomes music is the only thing which can so possess people that they drop all their inhibitions and just for a moment in this precious life they dance that is the real music if music be the food of love play on shakespeare 12th night i think i remember my shakespeare you certainly do real music has emotion in it and this is why real saints love music so much it helps them do their work shiva is rhythm the father of music and is shakti and his shakti is the mother the sound or notes the child is ganesha the song that is rhythm plus notes is equal to song ganesha has an elephant head so he never forgets he remembers everything just as through song you can remember your true personality and the musician he is the bee who carries the pollen from flower to flower giving rise to creation and it is he who enjoys who really enjoys the bliss of this creation the gods and specially the avatars are those celestials who create and who enjoy the music of the spheres I had read that scientists have learned that the sun is ringing just like a bell probably one component of the physical aspect of the music of the spheres I thought to myself the greatest music is written by gandharvas celestial musicians who incarnate on earth when a gandharva comes down to earth he cannot remember his previous state but subconsciously longs to return to it Gandharvas find it as hard to relate to ordinary humans as humans find it hard to relate to animals and most Gandharvas lead miserable misunderstood lives many of the great western musicians were Gandharvas like Beethoven Brahms and Mozart even Strauss was a Gandharva but he was lucky he had a son to follow him someone who could understand him all this emotion comes out in the music a gandharva will be a prodigy a musician right from the beginning and anything he produces will be good no matter what variety of music he might learn in this lifetime think of beethoven who composed some of his greatest work after he after he became deaf what concentration he must have had and what innate talent gopal nayak was a gandharva music flowed from the very pores of his body Unfortunately he lived in the time of the emperor Akbar and Tanzin Akbar's chief musician became so jealous of his prowess that he conspired to have him killed Gopala's body was dumped in the deep jungle When Gopal Nayak's mother learned of her son's murder she set out to find his bones so that she could burn them when people asked her how will you know whether or not the bones you find are his she would tell them he had music right down to his bones i will know them 
as she wandered through the forests of north india she would hold up to her ear every human bone that she found and would listen to it intently finally one day she heard faint music coming from one of the bones she held up to her ear and then and she said these are my gopala's bones she collected them and cremated them this story may well be apocryphal but vimala nanda cared nothing for historical accuracy he was interested only in the emotional accuracy that attention to emotional detail which enables to enables a tale to so possess a person that he drops all his inhibitions and just for a moment in in this precious life he weeps from the fullness of his heart jim reeves was a gandharva that is why i love his songs like many gandharvas he had an untimely death he died in a plane crash he fell to earth what a rich baritone voice he had and the wordings to some of his songs are really beautiful my favorite song of his is you love my daddy i don't know why but i always cry when i hear that song it is about a little boy who does not always do what his daddy wants him to do but wo- whose daddy loves him anyway because the little boy is his only son no matter how naughty a child is its parents always love it whenever i hear this song i think of my own big daddy my mentor no matter how much i have disobeyed my mentor he has still loved me in a way in which no one else has ever loved me i do not think anyone else will ever be able to love me in the same way certainly not a human in fact why don't you turn on the cassette player and let me hear you love me daddy right now i did so and the song brought tears to all four eyes in the room as we both knew it would and it was over vimala nanda and it was after it was over vimala nanda was silent for several minutes while the wave of emotion swelled broke and receded and then he spoke again the right kind of music acts like a way of bringing light into one's consciousness music is a manifestation of sound and sound exists wherever there is energy which means heat which means light when a siddha hears music he can self identify with it and with its with his astral body he can go to wherever the music is when a sadhu hears music he is so overwhelmed with emotion that from exuberance of joy things begins to happen and it does not matter if it is recorded or live music whenever i hear la paloma i am always reminded of my guru and the fun we had together after i hear it a few times the work just gets done on its own you have seen it happen robi you know people have made millions out of me by playing la la paloma he lo- looked at me side glance for a moment and then said almost in the tone a child would use to beg candy from a well meaning but uncomprehending adult would you play la paloma for me just once he knew that after his heart attack intense emotion would not do that organ any good he also knew that roshini his foster daughter was stricter in enforcing this sort of restriction than was i i knew that he could perfectly well turn the stereo on himself so i acquiesced and turned on his current favorite of the many verses of la paloma in his tape collection this time he did not weep his face became calmer and clearer and when he spoke again he did so resolutely my senior guru maharaj is the shrewdest p possible person normally no one can get anything out of him but if you give him the right type of music he will experience such intense emotional bliss that he will give away the results of years of years or decades of penance without knowing it only when the emotion leaves him will he realize what he has done once he and i and a mr bilimoria hosted achan maharaj a descendant of the court musicians of nawab wazib ali khan of ud wazib ali khan was a ruler who had been a gandharva on earth he became a great devotee of krishna though he was a muslim by birth when his musicians 
Kalika of Krishna, though he was a Muslim by birth, no, no. On earth, he became a great devotee of Krishna, though he was a Muslim by birth. When his musician Kalika Prasad and Bindadin played for him, he would go into Bhava Samadhi. Emotional highlights and Krishna would enter his body and dance. Wajid Ali Shah was an expert at the variety of dance known as Kathak, and this expertise was passed down to Achan Maharaj. His son Birju Maharaj is today the greatest Kathak dancer in all of India. So Achan Maharaj had a good pedigree, and we were all looking forward to his dance. When he arrived, he sat down and drank one and a half bottles of whiskey alone. After quite some time had passed, we asked him if he would kindly consent to show us a little of his artistry. But he snarled, "Who can play percussion for me? Who can play percussion for me?" While we were thinking of how to deal with this problem, he drank the last half of the second bottle of whiskey straight from the bottle. Suddenly, my senior Guru Maharaj took me aside and told me to prepare my car for a drive. We drove to a lamp post in South Bombay, under which a Muslim man was standing. The man never said anything and never looked up, but just got into the car. We returned to the house, and when Achan Maharaj was shown his accompanist, he snorted, "No one has yet been born who can accompany me." To make a long story long story short, not only did that Muslim fellow accompany Achan Maharaj, he began to make Achan Maharaj dance to his own tune. And when a percussionist can do that well, he is something. We all watched amazed and tranced both by the artistry of Achan Maharaj, who was indeed great, and by the wizardry of that Muslim. on the tabla my senior guru maharaj music lover that he is was ecstatic finally tears came out in achan maharaj's eyes and he said i will pay anything to have this man as my permanent accompanist but my senior guru maharaj said he doesn't play for money all this time the tabla player had said nothing nor had he looked up nor did he look up when i drove dropped him off in front of the same lamp post from which i had picked him up I doubt that he was a human being the way he was playing was a night silence descended for a few moments and then lifted again if dance can affect its listeners so powerfully think what it must do for its players a real musician becomes completely devoted to his or her music there was one sarangi player indian fiddle player i knew who used to carry a bamboo with him everywhere he went even when he went to buy vegetables he would haggle about the price and pay with one hand while constantly practicing fingering finger rings on the bamboo as if it were the neck of his sarangi with the other this is real dedication to music the kind of dedication that is necessary in sadhana also music should not be an end in itself for you it should be a sadhana a means of getting to your goal mantras are one way in which we can and which to make use of sounds in sadhana music is another the vedas are mantras set to music but the vedas are too far away from most for most of us while music is as available to everyone if you are lucky meaning if you have worked hard in previous lives and god is kind to you your music can be sufficient to draw god to you regardless of whether it is western style or indian style music i interrupted of course western religious music is very good but it is limited it can only make you realize the love of a servant for his master or of a child for its father indian music can make you realize your deity in any relationship as a servant or father and also as a lover spouse or friend as your own child as your mother the greatness of western music is that many musicians together can cooperate to create a tone poem an indian musician paints his complete musical picture with one instrument only indians are good solo artists but large assembles 
और ऑर्केस्ट्रास डू नॉट थ्राइव हियर बट देन आफ्टर ऑल साधना शुड बी डन अलोन इन इंडियन म्यूजिक ईच रागा मेलोडिक स्केल हैज़ ए स्पेसिफिक पिक्चर विच मस्ट बी विजुअलाइज एज यू प्ले और सिंग इट इफ यू डू इट राइट द ट्रू इमेज ऑफ दट रागा विल मैनिफेस्ट फर दी रागा मेघा द क्लाउड मेलोडी फॉर इंस्टेंस यू मस्ट इमेजिन द क्लाउड स्काई एंड ऑल इट्स बैकग्राउंड इफ यू वॉन्ट रेन यू प्ले मेघा इन ए सर्टन वे एंड रेन विल कम इफ यू प्ले दरबारी कन्नडा रागा प्रॉपरली यू विल सी द कोर्ट ऑफ अकबर द ग्रेट emperor of india he will be there smoking a little hookah then he lifts a flower to his nose tansen wrote the raga by using the raga called kannada and changing it slightly if you play kannada you won't get the same effect because the tonal patterns are different isn't it true that one of the meanings of the word raga is passion and that is what music should be a matter of passion tansen had ए थरौली तानसेन हैड सो थरौली मास्टर द रागा दीपका द किंडलिंग और लाइटिंग और इग्नाइटिंग मेलोडी दैट वेन ही सैंग इट ए डेस्क ऑल द लैम्प्स इन द पैलेस वुड लाइट दमजल्स ऑटोमेटिकली वंस ही सैंग दीपका फॉर टू लॉन्ग एंड ही बिकेम ओवरवेलम्ड विथ हीट फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स ही हैड इन ही वॉज इन एगोनी नथिंग रिलीव द हीट अंटिल इन ए विलेज ही केम अक्रॉस ए पेयर ऑफ सिस्टर्स ताना एंड रिरी who were experts in megha when they sang megha for him the heat finally abated even music can be dangerous and this had something to do with the surya and chandra nadis naturally the whole purpose of music is to help you stimulate your consciousness so that kundalini can be triggered up when tansen overdid it his prana was affected maybe he should have been self identifying with a dt instead of with a flame i put in may be so said vimalananda laughing the great benefit of indian music is that it helps you to self identify with your deity wherever whenever narsi mehta a famous poet saint from gujarat played the rag kedara the field melody for example lord krishna would come and dance before him can anyone learn to call krishna with kedara no kedara is not specific for krishna you would not necessarily see krishna even if you learned to play kedara perfectly it is only because narsi mehta visualized krishna dancing whenever he played kedara that krishna himself would come to dance you mean he used kedara like you use la pola la paloma to remind him of someone he loved yes he made kedara into his sadhana and it got him into serious trouble one day a sadhu asked narsi for some money to go on a pilgrimage narsi wanted to help the sadhu but was broke so he mortgaged kedara to a grocer in order to get the money he mortgaged kedara how could he mortgage a raga he promised never to sing it until the money was repaid but then people's words were their bond back then people's words were their bond if a man mortgaged his mustache to you for instance he would not fail to repay you because he would rather die than have his mustache shaved off thinking of what a tremendous penance this was for narsi he mortgaged the thing he loved best the dance of lord krishna which he could see whenever he played kedara to help someone else out unfortunately the sadhu never returned that in itself would have been bad enough but meanwhile those people who were jealous of narsi mehta's success had been busy poisoning the king's ears against him finally the king rao mandlik called for him and said i hear that whenever you sing kedara lord krishna appears do it now prove to me that you are not a false saint narsi mehta told him maharaj i cannot do it i have mortgaged kedara the king of course lost his temper at being refused and said well i see now that you are indeed a false saint tonight you shall be tied to a post in front of the krishna temple so that you can reflect upon your crimes if krishna does not save you by tomorrow morning you will be executed now narsi mehtra was really in a fix there was nothing for him to do but remember krishna as he waited for sunrise but lord krishna is never so cruel to his devotees he loves his devotees more than anything else in the universe 
that evening a mysterious person it was krishna in disguise went to the grocer and paid the narsi narsi's debt and just as day was dawning the cancelled mortgage note waf- wafted from out of nowhere into narsi mehta's hand narsi began to sing kedara suddenly the locks on the door of the temple did undid themselves and the doors flew wide open and the necklace which was around the neck of the deity flew through the air and landed around narsi's own neck the cords binding him to the stake dropped away this of course created a big commotion among the people who had gathered to watch narsi's execution they started to mob him to get him to intercede with krishna for themselves and he started to run they pursued him close behind outside of town an aghori was sitting enjoying the excitement as narsi approached him frantic the aghori said to him here take the shelter of my back by the time the crowd arrived there was only the aghori in sight and narsi mehta was never again seen in the world of men nada yoga so any kind of music western indian or anything else can give you results if you are sincere about it and make it into a sadhana i said you can i am sure that if tukara maharaj who lived here in maharashtra almost 400 years ago were to come here to bombay today and we were to play some new western song for him he would sit quietly and listen and enjoy it or at least he would look as if he were enjoying it all the time on the inside he would be hearing his mantra ramakrishna hare jay jay ramakrishna hare ramakrishna hari jay jay ramakrishna hari set to the rhythm and melody of the music in my own case whenever i ride a train pulled by a steam engine my own mantra starts to repeat itself in rhythm with the engine the same was the case when i worked with a textile machinery the noise of the spindles would give me a rhythm people who are serious about their mantras and put them into their hearts and souls will say them all the time in fact I personally find western music better than indian music for doing japa because western rhythms are simpler than indian ones which require more attention to avoid getting lost ah no wonder he enjoyed the rock music i brought for him of course there is more to using rhythm in sadhana than merely repeating your mantra to the rhythm of the driving wheels of steam locomotives or to the sound of the electric guitars of barbados i think you have heard me play the ganesh paran before ganesh paran before yes i have it is a little known rhythm designated to invoke ganesha once in a small indian principality named datia there was a pakhwaj large two headed drum player named khudav singh He was an expert at Pakhwaj because he worshipped the goddess Durga. In fact, before he would begin to play, he would throw the Pakhwaj into the air and Ma would strike it three times. Then he would catch it and start to play. The sister of the Maharaja, a young girl of 16 or 17, loved Kuddav Singh's music and used to listen to him play whenever he, she could. Eventually, she fell in love with Kuddav Singh himself. This enraged the Maharaja who told him to give him up. Who told her to give him up? When she refused, the Maharaja demanded that Khudav Singh reject the girl. But Khudav Singh said, She loves and appreciates my art. Why should I tell her to go away? The Maharaja then said, All right, since you have disobeyed me, you will be crushed under the foot of an elephant. Kings dispense justice like that. The king said, invited all the people of the kingdom to the execution of a uh, execution as a warning to them not to act foolishly like kuddav singh had the elephant was fed wine until its eyes became red absolutely the maharaja asked kuddav singh if he had any last result he replied my pakwaj which has been my life to me should be crushed along with me he was given his pakwaj as the elephant advanced kuddav singh began to play the ganesh paran when it played properly ganesh must come before you 
he has no choice he cannot escape this was a way for khudav singh to call his choice chosen deity mother durga please call ganesha help me durga who is after all parvati in another form and as such is ganesha's mother requested her son to aid her devotee ganesha agreed and entered the body of the elephant the elephant then sat down in front of khudav singh and began to caress him with his with its trunk for half an hour the soldiers prodded poked and goaded the elephant but it refused to attack then the maharaja realized his mistake and said let my sister be given to khudav singh and let the elephant wander freely in my kingdom wherever it goes those lands are to be given to khudav singh and until a short while ago khudav singh's family possessed those lands will the ganesha param work for anyone it will if you know how to play it properly and if you visualize ganesha in the right way while you play it it is a musical sadhana created specially for the purpose of invoking ganesha all the various sadhanas which use music are part of nada yoga in nada yoga you worship the nada brahman the music of the spheres the absolute expressed as the sound om which emanates from lord shiva if you follow this sadhana to its conclusion you will finally see that you and the universe are not different one in all all in one that is what i mean when i say everywhere i see everything is me anything that has a sound has a shakti and all shakti has sound associated with it the absolute itself is silent it has no qualities whatsoever which is why there is no bija mantra for lord shiva shiva has no melody to him he is pure rhythm the father of music this is why shiva is always depicted carrying a damaru small two headed drum the first musical instrument ever created since laya means both rhythm and dissolution a pralaya the periodic dissolution of the universe is merely the return of everything to the prathama first laya the first rhythm the absolute the sound om is the first sound to arise when creation begins and it is the last sound to disappear to disappear at the time of the pralaya but even after the melody the manifested universe has totally disappeared its rhythm lingers on first as anuswara and then as bindu you know that in indian iconography shiva wears a crescent moon on his forehead do you have any idea of what that suggests none in the sanskrit alphabet the sign for anuswara is a crescent i slapped my forehead in disgust i knew that he smiled here the crescent moon is an external sign of shiva's internal consciousness a sign that his consciousness is full of nada and that if you worship him your mind can be filled with nada too which will enable you to follow that sound back to anuswara and bindu to the source of sound oh is the bull he writes to on related to all this also of course one of the sanskrit words for bull go also means both sound and sense organ this indicates that lord shiva rides his senses he permits them to function but controls their movements perfectly and that he moves with the help of nada i have told you that bindu is a source of all sound which in the human begins with intention and culminates in vocal speech laya involves withdrawal of all our projections into bindu the source speech begins with para progresses through pashyanti and madhyama and then reaches vaikhari verbal speech this is the path of pravritti creation if you want to use sound to follow the path of nivritti the path back to the source you have to begin where you are in vaikhari and progressively refine your consciousness back through madhyama and pashyanti to para to bindu nada brahman is central to kundalini yoga you may recall that when kundalini passes through the anahata chakra you hear the sound known as the anahata nada 
इट मे साउंड टू यू लाइक कृष्णास फ्लूट और लाइक शिवास ड्रम डिपेंडिंग ऑन वॉट सॉर्ट ऑफ साधना यू आर डूइंग इट इज़ द सेम साउंड इंटरप्रिटेड डिफरेंटली बाई डिफरेंट माइंड एट फर्स्ट यू हियर दिस साउंड इन यूअर राइट ईयर बिकॉज द लेफ्ट ईयर इज माइंड फॉर स्पिरिट्स रिमेंबर दिस वेन यू हियर समथिंग टॉकिंग ऑन इन यूर लेफ्ट ईयर इट इज श्योर टू बी ए स्पिरिट ईच इंडिविजुअल हियर्स ए स्लाइटली डिफरेंट नादा देर आर वन हंड्रेड एट गटीज गेन्स और मोड्स ऑफ नादा वन हंड्रेड एट इज इक्वल टू वन प्लस एट इज इक्वल टू नाइन द नंबर ऑफ चक्रास इन द बॉडी अकॉर्डिंग टू अघोरा विच मोड ऑफ नादा यू हियर डिपेंड्स ऑन यूअर पास्ट कर्मास प्रेजेंट टेंडेंसीज एनसेस्ट्री एंड अदर थिंग्स एज वेल द गटीज आर मेनी बट वन कुंडलिनी रीचेस द टॉप ऑफ हर कोर्स यू हियर ओनली वन साउंड द नाद ब्रह्म द ग्रेट साउंड ऑल रिवर्स गो टू दि ओशन एंड नॉट वाइस वर्सा इफ द ओशन वर् टू गो इन टू ऑल द रिवर्स वॉट वुड हैंड टू दि रिवर्स दे वुड बी फिनीशड एंड सो वुड बी दि सराउंडिंग लैंड इन साधना ऑफ नाद दट ओशन इज दि ओशन ऑफ भाव इंटेन्स इमोशन the rivers or the nadis and the land is the human body first you follow your rivers into the sea and then if you are meant to return to embodied existence the sea will flood by rivers which will overflow their banks and fill you with an overwhelming divine intoxication which is bhava samadhi if you keep at keep at it you will progress to mahabhava samadhi which can lead to nirvikalpa samadhi did you know that the story of krishna and the gopikas is actually a step by step description of this type of samadhi no i will describe it to you sometime he said as we went into the kitchen for lunch krishna and gopis he described it one evening shortly thereafter over scotch my family belongs to the pushti marga the spiritual path marga whose greatest exponent was vallabhacharya who lived more than 500 years ago some people translate pushti marga as path of prosperity and others as path of grace but when i think of pushti i remember a phrase from the mahamrityunjay mantra he looked at me expectantly you mean sugandhim pushti vardhanam i asked yes the mahamrityunjay mantra is addressed to lord shiva the god of death when you repeat it you are requesting him to preserve your life and enhance your welfare vallabhacharya's philosophy is called suddha avidya pure non duality and follows the principle of all in one and one in all vallabhacharya never taught people to run away from the world and become renunciates he taught everyone to live a vedic life to live in the world without becoming part of the world so this is also advaita vedanta most certainly thus far you have been exposed only to the advaita of shankaracharya and the proponents of that school want people to believe that there is the only ad- that there is the only advaita vedanta they like to debate reality it is only natural since that is what shankaracharya did his whole life long Shankaracharya taught Brahma Sat Jagan Mithya while the absolute unmanifested is absolutely true the cosmos the manifested is mithya false but Vallabhacharya believed as we agohris believe that since god created the universe and pervades it the universe is as true as god is which means that everything is true since everything is part and parcel of god Vallabhacharya did not care too much for debate he preferred to spend his time worshiping krishna and enjoying the bliss of the nectar of his sweet name and form i like to call the pushti marga the path of sweetness because of the many sweet songs vallabhacharya wrote in sanskrit about his beloved probably the most famous of vallabhacharya's songs is the madhura shtakam the eight verses in the praise of lord's sweetness of all deities only krishna is madhu pure unalloyed sweetness in fact one of his names is madhava the sweet one why isn't this sect better known well there is a lot of esoteric meaning in their doctrine which makes it too complicated to explain easily the gaudiya math from which the hare krishnas developed 
teaches devotion to Krishna in his exoteric external form and rejects any kind of esoteric doctrine. This makes it easier to comprehend. The Pushti Marga believes both in the obvious and the hidden. And that is why I think it is superior, not just because I was born into it. If Westerners were to study Vallabhacharya's teachings, they would really learn something about Advaita Vedanta, about the hidden meaning of Krishna's play and about how he, how to be sweet. Krishna was something else entirely, said Vimanal, Vimalananda appreciatively, shaking his head in amazement. You know, the word Krishna has two and a half syllables and so does the word prema romantic love so it is only natural for krishna's play to be full of prema but he is no ordinary ordinary lover in fact he is a true thug that is why he is called chaliya the inconstant one he will play about with you when you worship him some days he will be very close other days you won't be able to find him at all as he plays with you you will be run through the ringer you will ache with longing when he finishes with his play you will be completely tired out you will cry with all your being when are you coming to me when he does come he will catch hold of your hand and will never let you and will never let go not even through millions of births except that there cannot be millions of births for you once he has hold of your hand finally you reach the state of Tadrupata, two hearts but one beat and then you are identical, identical with him if that is what you want but most devotees of Krishna never want to unite with him. They always want to maintain their own identities so that they taste his sweetness over and over again forever and ever. Although he is perfection personified, Krishna still has to come to our world to play about. Do you know why? Because of his beloved Radha. Why does the name Radha sound so sweet to the ear? Turn the word around and you get Dhara, the power to hold or fix. In this case, it is the power of to hold Krishna in mind. Everyone who has perfect Dhara of Krishna, whose mind is firmly fixed on him, actually calls Krishna to them. He goes wherever he is called. The person who calls may not see or sense him, but Krishna plays about with such a person and causes him or her to do so many things. Krishna is called perfection personified because of a siddhi he had which was far beyond all ordinary siddhis. This siddhi is called kartum akartum anyatha kartum. Kartum, that which is difficult to do but is doable. This refers to the Adi Bhautika, the mundane world. Akartum, that which is impossible for ordinary beings, which refers to the Adhyatmika, the spiritual world. Anyatha Kartum, that which is beyond both the spiritual and the mundane and is inconceivable to humans, referring to the Adi Daivika or astral world. This suggests that Lord Krishna has unlimited power in all three realms which means in the entire cosmos. Krishna had only one fault. He had a habit of promising to do the impossible. He would set up a situation, promise to change it and then change it and no one would know what he had done. All the time this was going on, he would stand to one side admiring his own play. But even Krishna was baffled by Radha. Even he could not understand her. Do you know the depth of Radha's devotion to Krishna? Even Krishna himself could not know it. Her bhakti was so intense that when she was away from Krishna, she felt as if she were being stung by thousands of scorpions all at once. If you want to awaken your kundalini completely by means of bhakti, your devotion must be equally intense. Otherwise, there will never be enough pleasure, pressure to force kundalini to rise into your head. Oh! Radha was a gopi, one of the milkmaids with whom Krishna carried on a secret romance. They would work all day long taking care of their homes and families. And when night fell, they would sneak out and make love to Krishna. Esoterically, Krishna is the soul, the shaktiman, the gopis are the nadis. 
the nerves of the astral body gopi literally means secret naturally because no one else but the sadhaka can know what is going on within his body the gopis went about their daily work as usual but their thoughts were only of krishna likewise a good sadhaka goes about his own daily life while his consciousness is fixed entirely to krishna they say that krishna has 16000 wives and of those 16000 he was fondest of 100 this means that of your 72000 nadis 16000 are predominant and of those 16000 100 are most important in kundalini of these there are uh, of these three are supremely important and of these three sushumna is most important radha the most beloved of krishna even though she was not even his wife represents sushumna do you remember when i demonstrated to you and your friend sirgi how through the manipulation of just one nadi in the second toe a woman can become aroused and even have an orgasm i remember it well and so on i am sure the woman he demonstrated it on can you imagine what would happen if all your 72000 nadis were stimulated at once i can imagine it with such difficulty well that is what love of krishna can do for you if that ever happens to you then you will know something about krishna's leela do you know the two main sanskrit words for play yes leela and krida krida is unconscious play like rati krida love play krida is play which is controlled by someone or something other than the being who is playing in love play the, ga- the glands and the genitals do the controlling not the two people who romance each other the rishi's play is leela cosmic pastime in which they are always in control this is why we talk about krishna's leela and rama's leela the divine play of lord krishna and lord rama everyone here in india knows when krishna was born but how many people know the real sense of krishna's birth only when the causal body begins to burn to ash is krishna really born at that time the kundalini shakti merges with its lord in the sadhaka's head and then all the 72000 nadis begin to dance in the cosmic rhythm each nadi vibrates with bliss thinking that she alone possesses krishna but in fact krishna being the soul is everywhere and dances with them all this is the way the rishis celebrate krishna's birth they enjoy the cosmic dance between krishna and the gopikas in their own bodies utilizing the kundalini shakti this is the real rasa leela of krishna so it is at least theoretically possible to experience the rasa leela the divine dance of intense emotion even now during kali yuga let me put it this way when narsi mehta was kicked out of the house by his sister in law he ran in desperation to a shiva temple and threw himself across the shivalinga he lay there for 7 days and nights forgetting to eat or drink allowing snakes and insects to crawl over him as they pleased finally lord shiva was pleased with his penance and appeared to him to offer a boon narsi mehta told him lord just give me whatever you like best shiva said well i love best the rasa leela of krishna so i will give that to you some people say that narsi mehta is the only human in kali yuga who has ever seen the rasa real rasa leela of lord krishna of course that is too far away for most of us he added when he saw the far away look in my eyes but if you think of krishna's exploits with sincere devotion you can develop intense love for krishna which will give you immense bliss and if you know the esoteric meaning behind the songs they can send you into ecstasy in one a gopi complains to her companion on the banks of the river yamuna nanda's son krishna flung a stone and broke the water pot on my head which caused all the water to flow out and lighten my load you know that indians frequently carry their heavy loads on their heads the gopis like most indian women used to fetch water from the river in large pots which they would carefully balance on their heads as they carried them back to their homes krishna to tease them would throw rocks and break the pots that is this is the surface meaning easily understandable 
by every woman who had ever carried a pot of water on her head such a song thus helps even illiterate village women to increase their devotion to krishna when you symbolize with someone you can when you sympathize with someone you can self identify with that person to some extent if you can sympathize with the gopi in this song it will be easier for you to relate to krishna even if it is only to scold him for breaking the pot we in india do not believe that devotion has to be respectful and polite at all times when you are in love with someone is the co- is the course of your romance anything smooth no it is not it cannot be if you are really in love sometimes you will fight sometimes you will weep and so on if you if you are if you really love your partner true devotion means falling in love with your deity so the gopis in the song seems to complain about krishna's antics this is the surface meaning meaning the esoteric meaning is something quite different never take anything here in india only at surface level our sacred writings are most esoteric and you should not take them at face value any more than you should take the books of moses which are also mostly esoteric at face value in this song the yamuna river represents the chandra nadi which flows in the left nostril the bhakti requires the functioning of the chandra nadi the gopis are the other nadis in the body krishna is the gopis lover he is the soul that which causes vitality and awareness in the nadis the soul also causes blood to flow in the arteries and so on doesn't your blood flow faster when you see your beloved the water pot is the head which is full of so many juices juices is not limited to physical juices like hormones it it also includes mental juices like tastes and emotions because an unenlightened person is selfish this water is poisonous poisoned by the venom of selfishness from the snake of the untamed ahankara i tossed in he nodded pleased that i was following his meaning krishna lightens the gopi of her burden making her enlightened after her head is lightened of the venom of the world the gopi becomes clairvoyant and clair clair audient then all she wants to see is krishna all she wants to hear is the music of his flute and all she wants to do is dance with him in the divine rasa leela once krishna hid in a tree near the yamuna and waited for the gopis to come down to bathe after they have undressed and entered the river krishna stole their clothes and when they realized that he had done what he had done they were too embarrassed to come out but krishna insisted and they all had to emerge from the water and stand before him naked naturally he wanted to see them naked he was their lover yes before krishna will dance with the gopis they must remove all their clothes the three coverings which obscure kundalini the gopis are embarrassed in the beginning their egos hesitate to leave familiar self identification but krishna is firm with them and eventually they must become naked then the kundalini shakti becomes free to move through the various nadis in the body and those nadis begin to dance krishna and shiva he paused to sip his drink when kundalini enters the anahata chakra you begin to hear the anahata nada which will sound either like krishna's flute or shiva's drum depending on which path you follow other nadis are also described in the books but these two are the most important let me try to explain to you the differences in nadi by describing how krishna's hair differs from shiva's hair krishna's hair has been compared to a swarm of bees what does a bee do with its time all day long it moves from flower to flower enjoying the nectar at each one the flower longs for the bee to come and take its nectar many flowers in fact exist only because of bees likewise like lord krishna moves from girl to girl from shakti to shakti and endo- enjoys with each one they long for him to come to them they exist only for him by their longing they draw him to themselves every sincere devotee of krishna is female no matter what sex the physical body might be bees are always buzzing and the sound of krishna's hair is 
likened by the rishis to the murmuring drone that arises from innumerable intoxicated bees the buzz is nada if you want use this image to improve your concentration on krishna you will begin to perceive this nada when your concentration on krishna becomes perfect lord krishna has long flowing luxurious hair lord shiva's hair is also long but it is matted into thick locks that what do the western indians west indians call them dreadlocks like dreadlocks his hair which is called a jata is compared to a snake because it is long and rope like and because if you listen carefully you may hear a low hiss like a snake's coming from it this is shiva's nada but of course shiva wears, wears a snake around his neck yes he does and yes kundalini is the serpent power think of this shiva wears a cobra around the neck and vishnu sleeps on sesha a thousand headed snake just as shiva allows kali to dance on him while he remains an inert corpse a sadhaka who awakens shiva in himself allows kundalini to play about on him but is never tempted to allow kundalini to identify with any aspect of limited existence krishna has also subdued kundalini in a different way once he danced on the head of a venomous serpent named kali kaliya in the middle of the yamuna river the lunar channel krishna used lunar energy to bring kundalini under his complete control and then he danced on her normally ma dances but krishna turns the tables on her this is why shiva loves krishna's play but krishna could do this only because his mind had been made totally firm by shiva which is why krishna loves shiva uh, shiva's play how many people realize that sadhana of shiva is sadhana of krishna and vice versa shiva cannot do without vishnu and vishnu cannot do without shiva it is a mutual bondage of love and necessity it has to be they are merely two aspects of the same being if you follow the path of gnana you must worship shiva in fact only when you are actually only when you actually become shiva will you really know how to worship krishna if you follow the path of bhakti you must worship krishna or some other aspect of vishnu and when you achieve krishna he will teach you about shiva that is if you can still remember shiva as a gaze at krishna's beauty one is the absolute unmanifested the other is the perfection of manifestation so on the path of gnana you are actually you actually become shiva while on the path of bhakti you worship but remain separate from krishna yes it is the difference between non duality and duality shiva contains everything within him he is the ultimate gnani when the god of love came to him to tempt him he incinerated that god with a single glance from his third eye the eye of gnana when there is no lust no desire there is no outward movement of energy and the universe ceases to exist the god of love was reborn as krishna's son because krishna is prasatmaka full of blissful emotion this is why he dances the ras leela and why he is called ananda ghana the mass of bliss he loves all the fineries and luxuries of life it is all his maya if you have become tired of maya and want renunciation you must go to lord shiva no other being in the universe has ever renounced as shiva has he has not renounced everything out of pride in his renunciation but because he loves only krishna and always craves to see him he has renounced because he has given everything to krishna how few people understand shiva shiva says my gopala loves beautiful clothes let him have them to remind me of him every moment i will never wear clothes instead i will wear the ashes of burnt bodies my gopala loves jewels i will wear a cobra to remind me that i have offered all that garlands to him i will drink poison all other food i offer to him and so on no one wants to come near shiva in this state so he plays with spirits he does not even crave devotees all he craves is gopala once he went so far as to actually turn himself into a gopala so that he could take part in the rasalila himself 
and if he craves vishnu don't you think that vishnu will crave him in return it is only natural vishnu loves his devotees better than he loves anything else in the universe and shiva is his ultimate devotee do you know how strong krishna's love for shiva is you have probably never thought about it even krishna perfection personified died when he met mahakala face to face his love for mahakala was so intense that he could not remain living separate from him it is this way for everyone while they are alive people say ram rama or o krishna when they are in trouble they invoke vishnu and ask for his help you rarely hear anyone saying har har because everyone is afraid of death but really their love for lord shiva is much stronger than their love for lord vishnu the moment they see shiva they have to die the emotion is so intense this is how he performs his duty shiva is the great giver and because he sees krishna in every living being he gives shiva unlimited boons <coughs> he is properly propitiated the problem is really not how to propitiate him the problem is how to get his attention he is in perpetual samadhi and it takes quite a lot of intensity to drag him down into the consciousness of his surroundings to give you an idea of what kind of giver shiva is let us take just one verse from the shiva mahimna stotram the hymn to the greatness of shiva this verse describes how vishnu was in the habit of daily offering 1000 lotuses to shiva one day shiva stole one of the lotuses as a test when vishnu found that one was missing and that he of his offering might be incomplete he thought to himself my eyes are described by my devotees as lotus eyes therefore they are fit offerings to lord shiva he thereupon plucked out one of his lotus eyes and offered it shiva was so pleased by the offering that he immediately appeared and converted the lotus eye into sudarshana chakra the discus which is vishnu's favorite weapon does this story have anything to do with the vishnu sudarshana mantra i wondered it may though pleased that i remembered that reference of many months before he was not so easily distracted from his point here is a point of the esoteric meaning of this verse not all just a part vishnu's 1000 lotuses are in the sudarshana he offers them to lord shiva daily by offering these internal shaktis to his internal shiva one day shiva took one which is that one the ego vishnu's only own personal shakti this naked shakti then embraced her shiva remember the difference between shakti and ma ma is the material aspect and is very sweet be prosperous my child and so on shakti on the other hand is immediate and impartial like a knife fast sharp cutting this accounts for the plucking of the lotus after the loss of his eye of duality because it was a shakti vishnu had been one eye left the eye of non duality shiva took the shakti and returned the sudarshana chakra sudarshana meets good side clairvoyance and why a chakra ask me that i tried to ask him that but he continued to talk i am not going to tell you the answer though what is the use of my telling you everything there are some things you have to find out for yourself by experience shiva is pure consciousness when you succeed in propitiating shiva your own consciousness is transformed into a divine consciousness so that forever after a, as long as you live you are in the world but out of it like the lotus which grows from the mud but remains unsullied by it the lotus is dear to shiva because it is the very embodiment of discrimination ordinary people have minds filled with the heat of passion caused by the caused by the friction generated by the mental turmoil due to sankalpa and vikalpa certainty and uncertainty desire and heat are the same thing of course raga means both passion and melody i said and in ayurveda raga means inflammation and i thought to myself it is cognate with the english word rage good coolness on the other hand means lack of mental turmoil lord shiva is always doing penance destroying the passions day in and day out 
just as he destroyed the god of love with a single glance from his third eye shiva's terrific penances create heat and so he needs to be continuously cooled off this is one reason why he wears a crescent moon on his forehead and a cobra around his neck snakes are cool to the touch and are usually quiet and immobile unless disturbed it is only when you disturb them that they will bite you the image of lord shiva sitting immobile in samadhi is the ex- in the extreme cold on top of mount kailash observing silence indicates the complete absence of sankalpa and vikalpa lord shiva's mind is always as firm as a rock that is why the linga is his symbol why does shiva need to do penance when he has already achieved such a high state because he is followed the terrible hala hala poison the poison of samsara which threatened to destroy the world to protect creation because he sees gopal krishna in all being and cannot bear to see his gopala troubled in any way he drank his poison and it stained his throat blue which is why he is called neela kantha the blue throated one exactly hala hala manifested at the time of churning of the ocean of milk we will discuss that some event some day but for now consider that hum and lum are the bija mantras for the vishuddha and mooladhara chakras respectively so hala hala represent the poison of everything which exists in the lower five chakras meaning everything made up of the five elements because shiva holds the poison of samsara above his vishuddhi chakra and never allows it to affect him he is always above the samsara in perennial samadhi ganga the ganga river flows from the celestial regions down onto the earth and shiva catches her in his matted locks breaking her fall so that earth is not troubled by the force of his descendant descend it is well known that bathing in the ganga can wash away one's evil karmas the river ganga was proud of his its ability of this ability of hers until she learned that it was given but to her by a rishi who purified her each day not for her glory but to provide coolness to shiva this rishi loves shiva so much that he is willing to take on millions of bad karmas daily just so shiva will not be troubled only a rishi could be so magnanimous but there is um but there is probably an esoteric meaning to this story also of course there is just as there is with bathing in the yamuna evil karmas are definitely washed away when you take a bath in your internal ganga the right nostril this is the path of gnana so finally it comes down to the two rivers the ganga and the yamuna Yes Shiva and Krishna gnana and bhakti call them what you wish they are the two paths to the absolute chapter completed om namah shivaya